Dear Sheila, I think it glorious the manner in which the young lads have faced the firing squads. Guess how many wounds I have. I'm taking a long time to die. No wonder they call us diehards. What did you guess? I have 12 wounds. There are nine pieces of lead still with me. I hope you are all right after the hunger strike. It may seem foolish to a person who was either never on strike or never watched a hunger striker, but every hour seems a week. It's hard to describe it, but I really believe the greatest torture one can undergo is to watch one's relations on hunger strike. How Mary and Annie McSweeney preserved their senses was, I believe, a miracle. This idea of the doctors trying to get you off it when they think it's getting too dangerous always amuses me. What do they think we go on it for? Fun. There are very few people of any ideals. In theory, we all should be ready to go and fight the cause, but 99% of the people aren't. They don't want to. Don't want to know. It's the people, they are, the people with the ideals are, are the ones who will go out in 1916 or 1803 or whatever. I mean, there, there's a few of them. The idealism of the Gaelic revival of the late 1800s had focused the minds of many, sparking a movement that would eventually lead to the setting up of Sinn Féin, the Irish Volunteers and finally the Easter Rising of 1916. The Rising was intended to revive the spirit of Irish nationalism, which they had seen uh, in 1914 as having died when so many hundreds of thousands joined the British Army. We all forget now that it was support for home rule, but only a small minority of people wanted to go beyond that. In retrospect, I suppose Pierce was vindicated by the effect that the Rising had. Uh, it did revive Irish nationalism, and I don't think we would have had an independent state when we did, and the form we did, and perhaps not at all if it hadn't happened.